Welcome everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Anita McKegg with the planning department and um, I take it that everyone can see my screen, correct? Thank you. Let me go to slideshow mode here. So tonight we're going to talk about a land use policy change in White's Creek. So tonight, you know, as I mentioned, I'm Anita McKegg with the planning department. I am the case reviewer for the land use policy change, what we call a plan amendment application. I've also got uh, Logan Elliott here, who's the case reviewer for the accompanying rezoning application. We've got uh, the applicant team, uh, Roy and the property owner, Rick. And then we also have council member Gamble. Uh, council member, you want to say anything? Thank you. Thank you for your work in, in providing this meeting for the community to hear about this uh, potential community plan amendment. And thank you all for joining. I know the weather is nice today, so it's a it's hard to come inside, except it except now it's getting dark early, which is which is awful for me. I like the sunshine. So uh, a few meeting logistics. I uh, I see that I think we've got one person that called in. So if you are calling in and didn't join through your computer, you can't see the presentation. So if you want to, uh, you can go to the planning department's website and join in the meeting uh, through a tablet or computer to see the presentation. Everyone's audio is muted just so the sound quality is better. We've got uh, a way to comment through the Q and A panel. I'll explain more about that in a minute. This meeting is being recorded and we'll post it to uh, uh, Metro Planning's YouTube, Metro's YouTube tomorrow. So anyone that missed it can watch it or if you have to leave early or anything. So I think a lot of you are familiar with ways uh, to participate now, but we're going to have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. Uh, however, you know, when we get to Q&A, you can raise your hand. But at any time during the meeting, you see it's highlighted down here. It's usually at the bottom of your screen, this Q&A function where you can type a question or comment. Uh, please make sure you send it to all panelists. That way we all see it and something doesn't get missed. It also becomes part of the record of the recording and a written record as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about background, purpose, why we're here, hear a brief presentation from the applicant, and then, as I mentioned, a lot of time for Q&A. So why are we meeting? Someone applied to change land use policies on Old Tickery Boulevard. I'm sure uh, many of you received the public notice or seen like what area we're talking about. Uh, I know that the council members had some previous meetings about this, uh, and so you all have talked about it before. So um, someone, here's the, the area that we're looking at is a study area, this dashed outline here. And um, it's early in the review process for us. One of the things we always do early on is set a community meeting so that we can hear people's comments, concerns, ideas about things before we get too far along in the review process. There we go. So I know that a lot of you are familiar with Nashville Next and the, and the 14 community plans. They guide decision-making for the built and natural environments. Of course, there's projects in the Whites Creek community plan. You see the star there. So as part of Nashville Next is, is a, a land use policy dictionary called the Community Character Manual. That's what we use uh, in analyzing properties, applying, uh, applying policy, I'm sorry, analyzing properties and applying policy. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. I know that a lot of you have also seen the transect. So tonight, of course, Whites Creek, we're in the rural transect. We're talking about extending an adjacent area that is in the suburban transect. So why are policies important? The way we use them at the planning department is they guide the recommendations that we make to the planning commission regarding zone change request. So if something is consistent with land use policy, there's a much higher likelihood that as staff, we're gonna recommend approval of something to the commission. And in the case when a zone change is not consistent with policy, as it is with this case, the applicant has requested a land use policy amendment to change the policy. And usually a community, uh, some type of community meeting is required. Every now and then there'll be some type of very minor housekeeping change that doesn't require community meeting. Usually we reach out to the public and schedule these. So we always like to remind people what the difference is between policy and zoning because it's very easy to get them confused. 
Lane use policy as guidance and a vision for an area. So when you hear us talk about changing from rural to suburban, we're talking about policy. And just a land use policy change by itself does not change a property zoning. So that's why you'll see in this case, two applications going together, uh, a land use policy change and a zoning application. Zoning, meanwhile, is a law, it's regulatory. In this case, changing from residential to a specific plan and it controls the actual development of land and its characteristics. So existing policy, you can see in the darker green color, rural neighborhood center and rural agriculture is kind of what I call seafoam green color. When you get in the rural transect, there are a lot of green shades, green colors. So you see here, this darker, darker one is um, the neighborhood center. If I can get my cursor to move, there we go. Then rural agriculture is this color. And of course, you see a lot of this color, which is conservation policy. And then this is rural countryside. So the policies we're talking about changing tonight are the neighborhood center and the rural agriculture. And conservation policy remains because it's recognizing sensitive environmental features. So in this instance, there are so many sensitive environmental features with this site. I wanted to take a moment and highlight those because as you can see, we've got Steep slopes, steepest slopes are in red here and others are in orange. And then you've got Little Creek and all the waterways, tributaries, stormwater buffers, all that that are running throughout this area. So as you can see, um, the sensitive environmental features are overlaid on top of policy with this map. So you can see there's a lot in this area. It's always important to call attention to those. And so, in this case, the applicant is asking, as I mentioned, to extend this adjacent suburban uh, community center policy to apply to this study area. Now, their rezoning is a little different than the study area because in this instance, they're more interested in rezoning this. However, you wouldn't jump and say suburban community center, then rural neighborhood center policy, then suburban community center again. So, you would need to extend the suburban community center to cover all that. As we know, sometimes when we have um, an area that's adjacent to an interstate interchange, it can look and function a little different than what you sometimes see if you were uh, isolated away from the interstate and you just have like two roads coming together. You know, we see that throughout Davidson County with the different interstates that run through. Sometimes that can create a different unique situation. So I just wanted to show another Google map image so that we've zoomed in a little bit and you can see kind of the area that we're talking about in here. And now we can hear uh, from the applicant. Uh, Roy, do you have um, something you'd like to share? I'm going to try. Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, see. Let see it. and it's not there allowing me to turn it Well, I dragged it to you. Let's see if that did. You should have it now. Can we see that? No. Okay. I can't hear you talking, so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I can see go. your computer screen. Could you see me nodding my head, yes. though? Okay. I'm going to go back, make sure I do this right. I'm terrible at this. That's not the one I wanted to show you. Oh, my goodness. How do I enlarge my screen again? Well, shoot. Okay, can you see that? It says Hickory Holland, so it's Little Creek. Can't hear you, Anita. Yes, we can see it. <laughs> okay, Hickory Holland's a little creek where it says Historic Whites Creek in orange. No, we don't see, we just see your files open. I mean, the, the file list, the, the, the actual file is not open. Okay, try again. How about that? We're just seeing your Windows Explorer, Roy. So, like your explorer, oh then showing us what 
files are there. Okay. Are you sharing your um, screen or the application? I'll, I'll have to open that probably and then share it. Okay, let me try again. I don't see it. Can can you just put your images up, um, Anita? I sent this to you. I sent a ball these files to you a few minutes ago. But can you just send up the the uh, land use policy amendment? Just set that up. Anita? Okay, wonderful. I could not unmute myself, Sade, and I couldn't ask for help if I can't unmute myself, right? So for some reason, when I click my cursor, it doesn't like me to go back and forth. So here we go, Roy. We will get through these technical difficulties. I don't know what's up with my, I think my room full of fur babies has decided that it's time for me to not be working because they're running around like crazy. And uh, I think they're they're doing something to my system here. Okay, can everyone see that? And then let's go to this. Yeah, can you see that map now? Yeah, go back to the other one I did first. That's actually perfect. The first one you showed, the aerial view. Okay, so this the this, this this area on on white on Ohiku Boulevard uh, around the interchange, it's sort of like a transportation corridor, and most of what occurs out there are uh, RVs or trucking facilities, and so. Um, the piece of property that we're looking at is adjacent to the um, the commercial use on the south side of Ordecker Boulevard. If you'll go to your policy map for just a second, this shows this. There you go. So <clears throat> the property that we're looking at actually is about 69 acres. And the two areas where the policy changes are proposed are a very small portion of that. Those two areas totaling together is less than 14 acres. And so um, the side on the north of this property and the majority of this 69 acres is an existing farm. It's an existing Labrador farm. There's a lot of farmhouses there. There's a lot of, uh, it's pretty unique in character to this community. And so um, I, what I've tried to do is to, to help my client create something buildable, but also create something that's beneficial to the community. And uh, so when he came to me originally, it's, all, it's been two years ago, actually, he came to me prior to the council election. And I told him that we really needed to wait until the council election was completed so that we could work with the, you know, the newly elected council member. And so um, Cumberland International wants to create two parcels, one on the north side and one on the south side. The parcel on the north side will be three acres, It'll be a commercial use, just like the warehouse that's existing, that's adjacent to it right now. The parcel on the south side will be about 11 acres for Cumberland International. And Rick Otten is on, uh, he can talk to you all about, you know, what, what that involves or, or what they actually do. But um, when I looked at this originally, I thought this was gonna be very difficult because normally when I'm involved in a project, there has to be something that goes back to the community and so I thought that probably having a little bit of experience in this area, this commercial policy is constantly wanted to creep and creep towards the west, creep towards White's Creek. 
And if you look at your drawing, Anita, where it says proposed change from TA, uh, from T2RA to T3CC, to the left of that, you will see a little dark green finger that sort of comes down towards Old Hickory Boulevard. And that represents a pretty much a, a sloped area and a vegetated area. And once you pass through that little spot right there, you, it, the view really just uh, really opens out into what I would consider to be the rural area of White's Creek. So the areas that we're talking about, this 69 acres is sort of in transition between the two. And so what I thought would be good for the community is if of the 69 acres, about 55 of those acres was actually placed into permanent conservation space, permanent open space, and a permanent working farm. And what that would do was basically to provide an, an area of, that says, you know, you cannot go any further. Now, if you were sitting on Old Hickory Boulevard and you look back towards at this site and you look back towards the interstate, all you see are commercial buildings, all you see are uh, other facilities. Once you get to the left side of this site, at this little pinch point and you look in that direction, you're looking at very open and rural area. So uh, what I encourage my client to do is to work with the community and try to come up with a plan. And this plan would preserve uh, this farm and provide some really wide buffers to provide a transition to the community and uh, basically ensure that there will be no further development towards the west. Um, we've been working on this about two years. I think we've had two or three different community meetings. Council members have been very involved. Uh, the current property owner or the current person that's using the property, I know is very involved in the process as well. Um, and I think there's been a lot of things worked out. Um, I did present a plan to the Planning Commission probably about a year ago. That plan has been modified several times. Uh, most recently, on the north side, of Anita, where you're showing this policy change to extend to the west, we won't have to extend it as far as you're showing it. There's a little building, a little gray building that you see uh, below where your arrow comes down, and exactly that little building right there, and there's a tree line to the, to the right of that. And so the policy will only extend to this vegetated tree line. It's, uh, it's a lot of old natural vegetation, and it again provides a really good transition point to preserve this farm to the greatest extent possible. It will create a three acre out parcel there. Um, and uh, so it will serve my client, but it also I think will serve the community as well. Um, you see your steep slopes there, Anita. I think you have something steep slopes. There you go. Now, exactly, uh, can you put your cursor where our property line is on the left, on the west-hand side? Exactly, right, right. Go to the west, to the west side of the property, above where it says R2, RA, where the green sort of comes down to Odrick Boulevard in the orange, that, that's it right there. So there's a natural steep slope right there. Everything to the east of that more or less looks back towards this commercial use area and everything to the west of that opens up into White's Creek. So again, by preserving that farm on the north, allowing only a small out parcel to the east of that parking on the north, allowing one building to occur on the south side and leaving a lot of open space, I think accomplishes uh, something that works for my client, but I think it also works for the community. Um, did you get any emails from me, Anita? Do you have access to your emails right now? Um, no, I have got my email turned off. Okay, all right. Um, I would love to show an image. Um, and I don't know what's going on with me. But, but what I also did, which I think is pretty impelling, and I, I'd like to find a way to get this to, to show you, is the property that we're talking about right now is zoned R15. So that's residential, 15,000 square foot lot. Uh, it is in a rural policy, and so when that, if that subdivision was to be developed, you could not get onto those orange slopes, and you could probably barely touch the green, and then to the south, you would not be able to get into the blue, which represents floodplain. But it still leaves a lot of area there. You can cluster those lots, and you could probably put around 100 to 130 lots on both sides of Old Hickory Boulevard. And from my perspective, and that's allowed by right today, that, that if you develop it in that manner, it would not really be conducive to the rural policy that it falls within. And to me, that if you maintain the farm and you just allow two buildings to occur, 
and save and preserve all the vegetation, to me, I think it provides a better transition and it actually fits within that policy better than to try to force it with a subdivision. So um, that's all I really have to say right now. Um, everything that I've presented to you is just, it's, I know it's subjective. It's just based upon my experience of being in Nashville a long time and familiar with this area and, and all areas of Nashville. And I just feel like that uh, a policy change uh, associated with the zone, with an SC plan that creates huge open space that's protected, provides this community with a, really, a really great benefit, but it also serves my client well in an area that's already partially um, utilized for as a transportation hub. Okay, thank you, Roy. Okay. Um, Rick, did you want to say anything? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, just to expound on just a little bit with, with Roy, um, one of the things that we've talked about and worked hard on is, is uh, um, Again, I understand as a business person uh, and as a, uh, a resident uh, of the concern of constant creep of uh, commercial uh, development. It, you know, it happens here. It, you know, it happens in many other areas um, in the country. So I completely understand that, and I understand why the, the residents would be concerned about it. So to expound on Roy's point. What we tried to do is uh, be able to develop uh, uh, our dealership on the south side um, and still stop the creep because on the western edge of both the south and the north, that will be either put into permanent, you know, whatever uh, designation it is, so it can never be changed. Uh, and on the north side, you know, uh, to further take that, we're going to transfer the ownership of uh, that lavender farm to Gigi, who's the current operator of it. Um, and so she she will have it, you know, for as long as she wants to have it. And it'll also, I would assume, be put into some sort of permanent agriculture or conservatory type of designation. So uh, as I understand the way planning works in many areas that I've been involved, uh, the creep will stop because being able to jump over that uh, would be virtually impossible. Uh, while st still accomplishing what our goals are, which is as the city uh, has grown, um, you know, we our current facility that we have in Metro Nashville, we have to be out of it by the end of 2023, and we want to, you know, uh, build a location in Metro Nashville. Um, and I think we are a good corporate citizen. Uh, the people in the area will uh, will find that out. Um, uh, we provide a lot of benefits. Uh, we do. We're a school bus dealer. So uh, in one of the prior community meetings, it was talked uh, about by some of the residents that you know they they uh, don't mind the the bus uh, operations to the east there because that's part of Nashville. Well, I would argue that us uh, uh, servicing and uh, and making sure all the school buses that carry our children are safe is probably as important or more important than those tour buses. Um, we're, we've worked with White's Creek uh, High School already uh, to offer some uh, free uh, training to their industrial ed students uh, to be diesel mechanics or other types of uh, jobs that we offer. Where we, you know, we're a a growing employer in in all of Middle Tennessee and other in other states. Um, so you know, this I haven't talked at any of the community meetings before. I guess I never really had a chance. Um, I would like to listen to. We we've endeavored uh, with Gigi the farmer to try to uh, get meet face to face with some of the local uh, residents that were adamantly against it, and we've never been able to put it together. Um, so we're here to listen, um, but we want to, you know, we're, we're in business too. So we want to, uh, get this handled, uh, so we can, uh, move our business forward in conjunction with the community. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll stop with that. I don't want to sound like a rah, rah, but, uh, Okay. Thanks Rick. Um, so we're going to open it up for, um, Q and a, 
And Sade and Logan and Corey, if y'all could help me, because I don't know if I can see people's hands raised. So um, I'm not seeing any Q and A in the comments, but does anyone have their hand raised? Hey, Anita, not at this time. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Logan, I sent you an email. Did you receive that? It was just an image, and I sent I sent to Councilmember Gamble too. I can try to share again, but I don't know what's going on here. There's one well, image I, I'm going to try. If someone allows me to share, I have the image. Uh, I think that you're trying to show. Yeah, let me make it. Yep. There you go, council member. Is that what you're looking for? It's it's actually one that says side by side. Okay. I don't know. I think that's the only thing that I that I got okay. that I have. Well, heck, I know I sent it. Is that not? Is that not it? That's a good layout, no. Roy. Pardon me? That's a great layout. Oh, no, the layout's good, but I, what I really wanted to do is show, and, and you can, we can look at the layout, but what I wanted to do is to show uh, sort of in green how much green space would remain. So when you're looking at that image right there, uh, you can see the, uh, the existing farmhouses, the little shaded buildings. And then there'll be in another building where it says out parcel that'll be probably the same size as that building. And then the building below on parcel B, but everything outside of that is just going to be green. If you were to develop this as a subdivision, which you could do, I'm not saying you would do, but you could do under the existing zoning and the existing policy, everything, all of that stuff would go away. So I'm just basically trying to give you some kind of a visual uh, so that you can see that by only allowing two significant buildings and preserving 50 or 60 acres of open space, I think provides a very good transition into this uh, community. And, you know, we did something similar to this in Jolson recently, Anita, where we did a Kubota dealership, uh, which also served that community. It was in a rural, a rural area. It was one building, but it was also surrounded by huge, vast amounts of open space. So um, I'm working with Logan. Uh, on the actual plan itself. Uh, I've made several modifications where lighting will be oriented towards the building away from the community. The front of the site will be heavily vegetated and screened. So this property will sort of notch in. It won't be really um, highly visible. Uh, if you did a subdivision, there'd be a lot more traffic than what this is gonna generate. And if you did a subdivision, that traffic is gonna go both to the west and to the east. Whereas on this facility, there'd be no reason for a truck to leave this facility and go west at all. It would only go towards the interstate. So thank you, uh, council member, for showing that. It's very helpful. Okay, so who has who has questions or comments? Uh Gigi do. The Waco, the Waco. Okay, Gigi, go ahead. I don't know. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. hang on. Uh -huh. We can oh, hear good. you. All right. I just wanted to say hello and um and kind of thank everybody because this is a, a it's a very stressful journey for everyone. Um, all I can put here is uh, my comment on um each each part of this process, working with Roy, working with Jennifer and the community, um, everybody's been really compassionate about it because I'm sort of the one that is sitting here trying to save my whole world. <laughs> and the process has been, um, you know, everyone's bought something invested in what they want the outcome to be. And all I can say is, um, I think that this is a compromise that we can live with. It's not ideal for everyone. It's not ideal completely. But um, I, I've gotten to know, uh, I met the CEO of Cumberland. I've, I've gotten to know them. And um, I think they're sincere. 
Um, they have a lot of, of employees that they need to take care of as well in a business that takes care of families. And, um, and the farm is something that they seem dedicated to. Um, and it is something that, you know, being here for eight years and having tried to buy it for the past eight years and gone through some of the things that have happened, um, it's, it has been nerve wracking because my lavender business has grown and I supply lavender now to farmers all over the state of Tennessee. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of compounded effect, um, to lose this farm. It affects more than my home and my business. It affects other farmers all over Tennessee that are now new lavender farmers. I have 15 lavender farms in Tennessee that have started up and getting their plants from me. And. Um, it's really, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can look to the future and really make plans and see that, um, that, you know, there's a, there's a longevity to this tilling the soil and working the land is something that, you know, as one local farmer said to me yesterday, she said, you know, you can't put all that in a U-Haul <laughs> It's more than packing up a house. And, um, I want to thank everybody for for what y'all are doing. And I especially am grateful for what um, Cumberland is, is offering because it is, it is a very, um, it's a generous offer. It is, and as far as I'm concerned. And thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Gigi. Yeah. Who else? I, need a, I don't know if Frank Teasley has a question. Jen? Not, no, not, not at this point. I'm waiting to hear from others. Thank you. George Ewell. Go ahead, George. Hello there. I'm trying to figure out how to unmute. Can you all hear me? Yes. Uh huh. Okay, great. Thank you all. Um, and I appreciate, um, staff's work on this, um, and to hear from, uh, the owner and from Roy Dale, uh, I was just. I personally feel so far that this is not beneficial to the community. I 100% support Gigi's work on our lavender farm. And uh, I mean, I feel like if she has been working for eight years to try to buy it, um, uh, I just am curious as to why uh, that hasn't just been pursued for her to pursue her ownership of the farm, um, that the exchange of feeling like Gigi gets evicted um, and her dreams of the lavender farm get dashed or the community accepts a heavy equipment sales and service facility in exchange does not feel um, appropriate to me. It doesn't feel even handed. Um, uh, uh, going back to what uh, Mr. Dale said about on his presentation, um, the study area is, is not an area of transition. I mean, he is correct that I feel like there have been many efforts to increase the creep of uses towards the rural historic district, towards the high school, towards the White's Creek Park. And I feel like it's inappropriate. I feel like the community very resoundingly spoke. Um, the zoning is residential, um, stands for decades. Um, uh, the attempt to purchase a residentially zoned, deeply rural policy parcel, I mean, T2RA, um, is applicable to areas that are appropriate and identified for or envisioned to remain primarily agricultural. It's applied in situations where there's an expressed interest in maintaining the predominant existing or desired condition for the agricultural use. And that condition is believed to be stable and sustainable over time. Um, I think that's where the community invested in the idea of the rural identity of White's Creek, the historic identity that this is a gateway into White's Creek. And Mr. Dale acknowledging that there has been attempts to creep um, and then presenting the next creep. Um, and not only that, but it's a large leapfrogging of the T2NC providing a transition step down from the off ramp services of T3CC area policies at the off ramps. This now extends T3CC continuously towards and abuts T2RA uh, beyond a point uh, where the community intended it to be by large. Um, and then introduces an SP that introduces a use of heavy equipment, truck sales and service, which planning is traditionally treated as an industrial use. Now, I understand that there are bus operations at the off ramps, but not all the bus operations are the same. 
um, and some of the more intense operations like say the anchor trailways operation at 7395 has been an SP that has not performed well, has not been enforced, um, has not been in compliance with and is a detriment to the community. And this is asking for more of that. So while I appreciate um, the, the the support or the offer of the transfer of Gigi's farm, I don't support the creep of the heavy equipment truck sales and service. Um, the other Cumberland trucking properties in Nashville um, say that even their office at Plus Park Boulevard is zoned CS in an area of district employment center policy. The 1901 Lebanon Pike facility is zoned IWD in a T3CM area of policy. Um, their sales and service facility on Butler Drive in Murfreesboro is zoned heavy industrial. Their sales and service facility at 980 Leeville Road, Lebanon, Tennessee is zoned industrial IL. Um, so while I appreciate planning staff possibly holding the line here and asking for a community plan amendment, uh, I don't think that community, the community plan amendment to T3 Community Center supports the intended use. The intended use is tipped deeply beyond the commercial spectrum of use and into industrial, and I feel like it's inappropriate. Um, well, I'm grateful. Uh, really to Cumberland Truckings for their for their sense of corporate responsibility, um, how well they may run their other facilities. But the increase in truck traffic, the increase in the qualitative difference between the bus, the high-end kind of touring bus community where it's a customization and a entertainment industry service versus tractor trailers, he heavier tractor trailer traffic traffic coming and going. I feel like there's definitely a qualitative difference for the community. Um, I feel like if Cumberland Trucking wanted to come with a presentation that might be deeply screened as a showroom or something like that, I might feel differently. Uh, but the SP as it stands with that intense use of heavy equipment sales and service does not feel like it meets community center policy and SPs in general have not performed well or been enforced well in our community. Uh, I'm sure I could go on, but I won't. I really appreciate y'all's time. And again, 100% support Gigi. Her farm is a value. Um, to the community that is in conjunction with the existing policy and the existing zoning and, and could continue. Um, there's no, there's no reason to interrupt it or hold it hostage or hold it over people and, or, uh, the, the prospect of residential development for the parcel. If that's going to be pursued as a sense of entitlement from, uh, Mr. Dale, perhaps the community could hear from planning staff on what they feel would be reasonable under the rural subdivision conservation guidelines, the, sub, the rural subdivision guidelines for what could be developed there. I just don't feel like that's a genuine argument, um, or moves it forward. And I just, I, I, regardless of, uh, I'm going to stop talking. I really appreciate it. Thank you all very much. Thank you, George. We have a Zach D. Deer. Uh -huh. Hi, Zach. Go ahead. Hi, thank you guys. Um, yeah, I want to also echo everything that George said. I agree with it um, for sure. I mean, I know everyone, everyone is sympathetic in the community of the Gigi's plight. Um, one thing I would like to add, though, on top of it all, is that um, I'm also with the Whites Creek Watershed Association or uh, um, Association. And um, I know that that Mr. Dale sort of glossed over the fact that there was floodplain behind the lot, but it is also downhill from that lot. So not only will there be increased flooding because of this development close to the floodplain, but any sort of runoff that goes into that creek is going to go all the way down White's Creek through Bordeaux and into the Cumberland River. So I have major concerns about that um, and I will step offline. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Angela Williams. Hi, Angela. Hi, thank you. Um, I want to support what George said. Um, uh, I, I support Gigi and I support, um, but, but just to, to keep her on there, all Cumberland trucking has to do is, is, um, allow her to stay. Um, so maybe that's an option. Um, I, I do think that, um, uh, White's Creek is a little bit of a disadvantaged community because we have been. Like, like other parts of North Nashville, we've been bisected by I-24 and Briley Parkway. And, um, and I think the boundaries of White's Creek, um, just keep getting, you know, squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And I know in 2017, <clears throat> when we redid the community plan, 
with over 500 people showing up and, and overwhelmingly voicing their support for our rural character, um, we, we worked very hard on the edges and the borders and, and what was going to be transition. The uh, anchor trucking property was for sale. So there's, that would make be over 35 acres that's, that's for sale. And so we don't want that arc and in, in the advertisement for the, the lot, it even offers a, a truck stop. Um, and I think, and I think we're bending the wrong direction. Um, in speaking with uh, Kylie, um, the head of diamond coaches, who's 1 of the custom bus companies there. Um, she, she agrees, um, that the density. Um, the, the, our roads, we don't have the infrastructure for 18 wheelers in the increased traffic. Um, and, um, for the, the light pollution, the noise pollution, um, uh, you know, right now the, the bus lots are, are lit up pretty big. And if you continue that on, it's going to look like downtown Nashville. Um, for, and, uh, so we got light pollution, noise pollution and the diesel. It's just not compatible with our rural countryside. Um, and, and, you know, with, with that property for sale and this failed SP, um, people think that the industrial is just what it is out here. And, and that is not the case. And so I think, I think we're standing as a community with Gigi to support her farming ef efforts. And then I think we're also standing as a community saying, Hey, no more creep. We're ready. We're ready to move forward with appropriate development for the wishes of our community and the health of our community. Thank you. Okay. Who else? Marcia, Marcia. Go ahead. Uh -huh. uh, yes, so I want to ditto uh, what everyone else has said. George and Zach and Angela have said it very well. Uh, we fully support Gigi. That's the type of um, things that we, we want Bikes Creek to be made up of is, is like these farms. Uh, so I have two questions and I know that things change and, you know, uh, whatever, but I just wonder, um, Cumberland trucking says they're losing their lease or whatever and have to be, be out by 2023. And I just wonder what the reasoning behind that is, um, how that happened. And I want to, uh, ditto the thing that there is uh, acreage closer to the interstate that is available for sale. And it seems like that would be closer to the like businesses, uh, if they would consider something like that. So, thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Greg, do you want to wait? Yes, yeah. yeah, sure. So, uh, as far as the lease, um, the the lease is a the ter will be the termination of an 18 year lease that uh, was put in place when the current owner of Cumberland uh, bought the dealership uh, from the original owner uh, in Nashville in 2007. Um, and, uh, over the years, we've tried to buy that facility and stay there permanently, but the owner has other ideas for the use. So it's a natural ending of the lease. We would prefer not to move. Um, and it's a monumental task to do that. Uh, first of all, to even find a piece of property that works for us size wise and uh, location wise in Davidson County um, is, is a challenge uh, as far as and we have looked and looked and looked not just out in this area but all over Davidson County south north east west inside outside upside down it's it's very very challenging uh, we've been doing this for over two years two and a half years like Roy said um, and the end of 2023 sounds like a long way away, but in today's environment, we put a shovel uh, into the dirt to start building that building today. We'd barely be ready by 20, the end of 2023, the way things are going. So um, we're not trying to twist everybody's arms. We're just trying to solve uh, our business issue uh, and, uh, you know, and, and help fit into the community as best we can also. 
Uh, I appreciate that. And and so to Angela's point, there is um, acreage that's that is for sale. Uh, closer to the interstate 35 acres. Have you looked at that at all? I, I don't know which piece of property you're talking about. Part of the also the issue is um, everything for sale isn't necessarily for sale. Uh, I know the, uh, the that that parcel that where the bus place is on the corner there that I think Angela alluded to. Um, uh, that is that he's offering for sale or has it listed for sale. Um, he may have it for sale, but he, his asking price is double the appraised value. So, uh, you know, having it for sale and having it legit, legitimately for sale are two different things a lot of times, especially in this area. This area, I mean, Davidson County broad. But if, if you will let me know that the 35 acres is, we would definitely look into it. We may have already. Uh, we have a, our whole executive team has been working on this uh, full, you know, full till. Okay, thank you. Um, and I, I guess I'll just read it right with the others that you, uh, Roy Dell has indicated that creek will not occur anymore. And that's not what we've, we've experienced. Um, that this will just open up and there'll be something else. Um, that will be proposed that uh, creep will continue to occur. So thank you. Thanks, Marsha and Rick. Who else? Who's next? We've um, we've got a question in the chat about um, can planning uh, please speak to George's question about the possible density available to be developed under the current zoning. And that's a tough one. That's a very tough one to talk about off the top of your head because, um, you know, the current zoning is R15. And when you encounter, uh, you know, the subdivision regulations look to what transect you're in as to which chapter of the subdivision regulations apply. So in this case, um, they would look to uh, the rural subdivision regulations. And to start off the bat, you've got, uh, a choice of um, either a, a large buffer off the road, you know, you're trying to preserve, in other words, the pastoral look across a corridor, like along a corridor. And so uh, you either can do that with a, a wide expanse of, of where it looks like farmland, or you can do it with landscape and with a dense buffer. And so uh, then, you know, you, you have to uh, start from taking off everything, taking away everything that's in a uh, sensitive environmental feature conservation policy. So, depending on how much conservation policy a certain piece of land has, you can really decrease the amount of density that could go on it. But um, that would take a lot more study than just a, a quick look at something. So, so we can talk more about that if, uh, it, you know, if, if it comes to that, like somebody wants to talk about that. Um, Roy, did you all do anything about traffic estimates of increased type and volume of traffic? Roy, Rick, anything there? So, um, I was going to try to answer a couple of the questions, I guess, that came up. As far as stormwater is concerned, you know, Metro does not allow us to increase any stormwater. So, I know, I know this abuts the creek in the back, but the water would be contained, it would be held back. You cannot develop in the floodplain, cannot develop the floodway and the floodway buffers have to be preserved and that would happen whether it's a subdivision or whether it's uh, any other use. Um, this, uh, I looked at the number of lots that would be allowed. If, there was, if this was not in a rural policy, just in the R15 zoning, you would wind up with a little over 200 houses, 200 units, because R15 zoning is actually a duplex or multifamily zoning. 25 of the lots, 25% of the lots could actually have two houses. But in this case, with the slopes, uh, with the features that would need to be preserved, you're going to cut that by at least a half. So I think that the property would develop more along the lines of 100 houses. They went, the lots would be clustered a little bit. And I just firmly believe that that would be out of character with what exists there today. I think that the larger buildings and the open space, I think, actually works better. And that's just my opinion of that. As far as traffic is concerned, um, a subdivision would allow traffic to go in both directions. This site would be very limited and traffic would be 
more or less going back and forth from the interstate. Rick would be able to much better tell us how many vehicles a day that would actually be. Um, and so I think that was most of the questions that I heard that people had uh, th that they asked. And so I'm going to let Rick maybe try to answer the question as far as traffic is concerned. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd have to probably uh, get some uh, uh, counts from our people. I, I don't want to shoot something off the top of my head that would be inappropriate. But I would say that uh, our operations were a destination type of place. And it isn't where people are coming with their uh, heavy trucks one after another after another every five minutes. Um, and in fact, most of our operations are uh, uh, are out. You know, we we deliver parts around uh, 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 Davidson County. We have mobile service that we you know go out. So we, there would be trucks that would come there, but they would be trucks only. We don't accept trailers generally, and um, uh, it, it wouldn't be heavy truck use. I mean, I, it, right now we're on Lebanon Pike, which is, you know, two miles from the edge of downtown Nashville between Briley and downtown Nashville. And, um, and there's, there's literally an apartment complex right across the street from us. And we have had no issues uh, with uh, the truck traffic uh, relative to the neighbors. Uh, we have residential uh, and a VA uh, place next to us um, and uh, apartment buildings and homes across the street from us. And there's been no no problems. Um, Cecil, do you have a question? Yes, I'm Buddy Cheryl. I am um, the Jason property owner and I guess related to traffic. Uh, has there been any discussion about a turn lane. I know the eastern entrance looks like the only entrance to the site now. Uh, I think it originally there may have been a western entrance too. And uh, I know I did uh, voice a, a concern about having a turn lane in there when you had the uh, western entrance, but maybe that's been taken care of. I don't know. I'd like somebody to uh, um, Talk to me about that and see what's been done or said or any discussions with TDOT and Metro on that. Can we answer that, Anita? Yes. Uh huh. Yes, Roy. Okay. So um, during a lot of the community discussions we've had, we felt like that having two points of access would be unnecessary. And so we moved the access point as close as we could to the east part of the property as possible so that it would not be, you know, towards the, uh, the pinch point where you get into White's Creek and would not get towards the west side where we've got all this expansive open space, an area which cannot be penetrated in the future because it's going to be a conservation overlay. So um, Public Works will look at that access. They'll determine whether there needs to be an acceleration lane or a deceleration lane there. Um, most likely there will be transitions to the existing road. Um, generally, Metro wants you to build the right of way to half of whatever is future proposed there. And so there would be widening that would be required with this SP. That's, you know, the details of that are still being worked out, but that's why we eliminated that second access. Buddy, do you have a, another question? Yes, I do. Okay. On the western side of the development, our partial D, I believe it is. What's to become of that? What's uh, there may have been some discussion previously on how that stands. Will that stand alone by itself, or is that part part of this overall site development? Uh, Are you? To, uh, 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 I'll answer that. That's on the, the, the parcel on the south side on the western edge, right? Yes, sir. That joins me. Yes, yeah, so that, that is what we were uh, contemplating putting into some sort of permanent conservation. Uh, conservation. So, mm -hmm. again, just, you know, from the idea of stopping the creep, that if we put it into a permanent, uh, you know, it'll be permanent green space in theory forever. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thanks, Betty. Who's next? 
Lisa Proctor. Hi, Lisa, go ahead. Hi, thank you so much for hosting this, um, Anita. And um, I wanted to um, address, first of all, I do agree with um, the community members that have spoken so far. <clears throat> Excuse me, can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I live at 4129 Dry Fork Road here in Whites Creek. I'm in a different district, but Whites Creek. I'm a tr I'm the treasurer of Friends of Whites Creek, the neighborhood organization. Um, we as a group, um, actually as an organization, are opposed to this. And I wanted to go on record to let you all know, not as just as individuals, but as our organization, Friends of Whites Creek. Um, that we are, uh, I'd like to read a few points into the record. Um, what friends of White's Creek statement is. We support Gigi's lavender farm. Friends of White's Creek does. We do not support the proposed change in the community plan from rural policies to suburban community center. We encourage appropriate rural ag agricultural or residential uses that support the local community at this entrance to rural and historic Whites Creek. Friends of Whites Creek has serious concerns about inappropriate industrial or heavy commercial uses eroding the community's rural policies, the environmental impact on Little Creek and the Whites Creek watershed including increased flooding risk and polluted runoff, increases in noise and light pollution, and the precedent of purchasing a residentially zoned farm and flipping it to the heavier spectrum of commercial use. The Friends of Whites Creek and neighbors have serious concerns about lack of infrastructure, increased road deterioration from an increase in heavy equipment, and dangerous traffic next to Whites Creek High School and Whites Creek Park. The community is not limiting or removing any development rights away from Cumberland Trucking under the community plan and zoning. The current owners presumably bought the property with full knowledge of the T2 rural agricultural policy with residential zoning. For that, I just wanted to go on record and let you all know that the organization Friends of Whites Creek is opposed to the amendment to the community plan. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I'm hoping one of you um, all can email me that that letter as well. Happy to, Anita. Thank you. Um, I think Will has a question. Will? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Will Worrell. I'm a uh, civil uh, and, and environmental engineer. Uh, that's my background. Uh, I've, I've reviewed the proposal and had uh, some items I wanted to bring it to attention uh, uh, from kind of a technical basis. Uh, the first, the first item I wanted to bring up was that the proposal is to um, move the policy to T T3 CC which is suburban community center. Uh, according to the planning department definition, a suburban community center is to serve suburban communities. They are pedestrian friendly areas generally located at prominent intersections that contain mixed use, commercial and institutional land uses with transitional residential land uses in mixed use buildings or serving as transition. Uh, these areas are served by highly connected street networks, sidewalks, and existing or planned mass transit leading to surrounding neighborhoods or open space. Uh, so the, the proposal here, as far as what I'm seeing, I do not see how the proposed facility has anything uh, slightly similar to a pedestrian friendly uh, mixed use suburban community center. Uh, when I envision what that might be, I might think of um, a walkable uh, kind of, you know, town center type area, um, perhaps uh, like the Green Hills, the um, development that has shops um, and, and walkable areas. So that, that doesn't seem to be what's proposed here. So I'm not sure why that community plan is, is proposed to be used. 
the second the second item I want to talk about. I will. I can't. I can't hear you anymore. Can you speak up? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Sorry. Um, the second item I wanted to just bring up quickly is that according to Nashville Next, uh, this area of Old Hickory Boulevard is designated as a scenic arterial boulevard. Uh, according to the code, um, these streets are designated uh, as scenic and connect areas of scenic and cultural significance and call for enhancement or preservation of existing natural areas on private properties outside the right of way and planting of new landscaped areas. Again, I'm not sure um, that I would agree that um, a, a large commercial warehouse would, would be the intent of what would be built along a scenic arterial, according to Nashville Next. Um, I've also noted that the adjacent SP to this property on Old Hickory Boulevard, uh, that SP seems to have violations with the implementation of that SP. Uh, the SP required uh, sidewalks as well as vegetative buffers to block the building from view. Uh, and when I've gone over there, I have not seen any of those items. So that um, makes me wonder if the, if the planning department would be able to uh, enforce an SP at this location, given that the adjacent one is seemingly in violation. Uh, the, 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 the final item I just wanted to bring up is that um, I would request, um, because of the, the, the visual um, objection of, of the uh, commercial buildings that that all of the areas along uh, Old Hickory Boulevard, as well as the entire west boundary, uh, be designated as a landscape buffer yard type D, which is the most uh, dense and um, and blocking type buffer yard that can be installed. So I would request that that would be uh, part of any proposed development landscape right. buffer yard type D, and um, that as many trees can be protected as possible. So uh, because of some of these reasons, I'm, I'm not personally um, supportive of the community plan amendments uh, uh, based on what information I have now. Uh, so thank you for considering our input and thank you for uh, looking into these various items. Thank you. Thanks, Will. Yes, a couple other people mentioned that um, SP. So we'll take a look at that and see um, if we can figure out what's going on with the implementation of of that adjacent specific plan. So we've got a couple more questions. I know we're a couple minutes over, but I want to try to get to these if at all possible. Uh, Rick, this one's for you. So you've mentioned a lot of um, activities like, you know, school buses and talking about the trucks and different things. Can you can you state again what uses you would like to propose for your facility on this property? Uh, well, we're a, we're a just a traditional truck dealership and for those who don't know what a truck dealership is it's very similar to what your local toyota dealership is to cars but it's for commercial and it's a lot less uh, retail driven uh, so the the facility would uh, uh, we would do uh, mechanical repairs inside the building we would have par truck parts uh, inventory there that, that will be uh, purchased either at the counter, but most of it delivered to our customers from there. Uh, and there will be, you know, outside parking, obviously, of big trucks. But all the work will be done, all the noise uh, and all that will be inside the building. Okay, thank you. Uh, Roy, can you talk a little bit more about the Greenway, the proposed Greenway you mentioned in Trailhead? Okay, so uh, when we originally submitted the plan, we showed a possible trailway on the west side of the proposed truck facility, but in the meetings that we've had with the community, the community didn't want that. So it, it's not presently shown right now. It can be added back. That's not a problem for us. But um, in my discussions that I had basically with the White Creek, White Creek group, they did not want a trailhead and they did not want that greenway. So it's just open space. Basically, heavily vegetated is what it would be currently, unless you know they want to change that, which we're more than amenable to do that. And we heard from a buddy, an adjacent property owner. Someone else asked, "Are there any other adjacent property owners that would like to speak?"
So is anyone seeing any any hands up or anything? No. Okay. Okay. Well, th well, thank you everyone. Um, it sounds like there's some more conversations to be had uh, based on the level of concerns and everything that I'm hearing uh, with this plan. So we'll, um, we'll discuss with the applicant, like possible options and everything. Uh, Council member gamble. Did you want to say anything as we wrap up? Go ahead. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, if we could also add to the list of, of follow up what the uh, uh, building would do to the floodplain and, and the mm -hmm. watershed and, and any uh, water runoff, if, if we could hear from or, or get some information from Stormwater, uh, Mr. Steve Mishu on that, I, I would be interested in, in learning more about what potential um, water issues could result from, from the this development. Okay. Thank you. This stormwater weighs into our um, rezonings and things. But Logan, I don't know. Have you heard anything from them yet? Right. I, I'm, I'm sure it hasn't gotten to that stage right. yet. Right. But if we could be proactive yeah. and kind of find out on the front end yeah. any information no, that he could provide. Just I just wanted to make. That. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure Logan hadn't heard anything. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Got that on the list. Okay. So, um, uh, let's see. I think, um, okay. Can we. Okay. So someone has asked for, um, can we have another meeting with these questions? Uh, can we have another meeting? Yes. Okay. So, yes, you know, oftentimes when uh, community members have this, this many issues and questions, I think what needs to happen is we can uh, talk with the applicant, the applicant uh, team, Roy and Rick can digest what they've heard tonight. Maybe think about it a little bit, talk with the council member and us, and then we can reach out to everybody about next steps. Uh, potentially sound good because I know it's getting late. Uh, tonight, so I want to thank everybody. Thanks for participating and speaking up and asking questions and showing up. So, thank you everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.